There was one single flight that I could get on to get back, and God provided that and, and was able to do that. So we, we just appreciate that. All right. So um, let me tell you a little bit about how things are going to work for the next 31 days, including today. Today is your, here's the good news. For those of you uh, watching, listening, and those of you that are in your groups, this is your lesson one. You can check the box and say, Proverbs chapter one, I'm good for the day. I went to church. This is good. And you can go on and go about your day. Beginning tomorrow, um, you'll be getting, and I'll go over this in just a moment, you'll be getting a lot of information about walking through Proverbs together. Invite people along with you to do that. Tammy, I know that you've got a couple of people that you sent to Diane. Can they participate? Yes, we'll get them added to the list. They'll, they'll get everything they need to do that. I just, if you're, all of us need to grow. But I think this is a tremendous way to just kind of refresh. Uh, uh, for me, it's a good uh, kick of the seat of the pants to get back and say, okay, there's some real practical things that we need to know and that we need to do. And let me let me hit you with a couple of reminders of things that we talked about last week is that you'll get some email reminders every day. I'm going to include the scripture in those emails. You'll be getting some worksheets. And these worksheets are just an easy follow along. There's some questions at the bottom of the worksheet. There's even some, if you're a list person like me, there's boxes at the bottom that you can check to say, okay, I listened to the podcast, I read the passage, and um, I, I did my part. And you can check those boxes and be done. That's me. That's I like those things, so I've got it in there. I've also got a useless fact of the day that I've included in all the worksheets. And I'll send you today's worksheet as well. They're just completely useless. You're not going to grow in any wisdom whatsoever by these useless facts. But as far as I know, in the resource that I'm using, they are accurate useless facts. And, and I'll bet you that you'll share these useless facts along somewhere that day or the next day. You'll, you'll forward those along. So it'll be fun. We have a little bit of fun with it together as well. But we're doing this, remember, as a way to, to be more diligent. It's to develop, a, yes, to develop a habit, to be intentional. You're not, gonna, you're not going to you know, get this habit ingrained in you today. But what you're going to do is today you're going to make a decision or if you make the decision on August the 5th, it's okay, pick up on that day. But I hope what you'll do is decide today to say, you know what, I'm going to participate, I'm going to do this, and I'm excited about the students participating along with us because several of them committed that they would. But it's to be more diligent, to be more intentional about reading God's Word. God's Word is really, I think sometimes we overcomplicate it and make it difficult. If you start out in the book of Deuteronomy or the book of Numbers, it can be a little bit tough. Even the book of Revelation, you get in and go like, wow, this is hard to understand. Proverbs just isn't. It is just not difficult to understand. Or the book of John. But we'll get into this. We'll get into the book of Proverbs. Yes, we've done this before. And we're on about a two-year cycle of doing this. And probably two years from this month, we'll do it again. And, and continue to walk through this. There's so much to get. Today's message, we're just really concentrating on just three verses. So um, let's take a look at this today. And to be more diligent, to be more wise, and to be more secure. Proverbs chapter 1, we're going to be in verses 20 through 23. Well, I'm going to give you three different lessons today. If you're taking notes, you, you probably got some sheets in front of you. If you don't, uh, you'll have them at home. You can go back and fill these in. But just write these. But, but, but there's going to be three lessons I get from this today. And it's not going to be three cute points that all fit or start with the same letter and all these different things. I want to get you in the habit, help you to be more diligent, to become more wise and to be more secure as Proverbs chapter 1, I think it's verse 33 says. I want you to know that there are lessons that we can pull out all through the book of Proverbs. If you read the book of Proverbs 40 times, there's hundreds of lessons you'll pull out of it. And here's three lessons I want to give you today just from verses 20 through 23. Let's read Proverbs beginning in verse 20 and 21. Wisdom cries aloud in the street. In the markets, she raises her voice. At the head of the noisy street, she cries out. At the entrance of the gates, she speaks. And the she here, of course, is wisdom. It's, it's not a person. And here's lesson number one. Satan works covertly, but wisdom shouts and shines. Wisdom works covertly, or Satan works covertly, wisdom shouts and shines. Satan is a deceiver. Mm -hmm. He works behind the scenes. 
He uses some things that are familiar, but he is just such a a perverter and twists things and just I mean to go on with the word of God says that every everything the guy says, I mean, it's a lie. He just he's such he's such a deceiver. Ephesians chapter six, verses ten and eleven say, Finally be strong in the Lord and the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. But there's a reason why. There's a reason that the scripture says, Finally be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. And it's because so that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. He's a schemer. He's not an obvious guy. He's going to sneak in around some things and he's going to twist some things to get you convinced that that's the direction that you need to go. He's even going to make it seem like fun. And what he's going to do, even in the schemes of going through Proverbs, this isn't a guilt trip, this is a fact. Even walking through Proverbs together, I can't think of a single reason why everybody watching, listening, and a part of G3 Community Church wouldn't do this together other than this, is that Satan is going to try to convince you that you're busier with other things, I've been through that before, and there's nothing new that you're going to learn. I, I know all that. We went through it two years ago, Pastor. You had a nice booklet you passed out, and I've mixed things up this time. But, you know, it, you know you're just recycling the same old material as what Satan's going to try to scheme and convince you of, and it's not. I'm not saying you, there's nothing new I'm going to say. There's nothing new under the sun. But I'm going to try to bring it to you in a fresh way because Satan's going to try to convince you in a covert way, in a twisted way, don't do this. You don't have the biggest thing will be you don't have time. I'm telling you, I hope you spend hours in it. But in 15 minutes or less a day, you'll be able to walk through this. And everybody's got that. You say, well, you don't know my day. I'll, l- let me help you dissect it. Carve out 15 minutes. We can do that together. But Satan works covertly and will convince you, you don't need this. You already know it. Because you know what Satan doesn't want? Satan doesn't want you convicted. Satan doesn't want you convicted because he doesn't want you to change. He wants you to stay just the way that you are. Say, well, I, I know the Lord. Why would Satan? Because if Satan can convince you that you're okay where you are, you know enough. And I don't care if you're 8 years old, 18 years old, or 80 years old. Satan is going to try to convince you. You know enough. It's time for you to kick back and let other people do this. Don't don't let him do that to you. He's covert like that. And what he's trying to get you to do is that, well, everything with you is okay. And there isn't anybody that everything's okay. There's things we need to learn. There's things that need to change. And it'll work like that covertly. Matthew chapter 7 verse 15 says, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. Satan is going to dress something else up that looks more attractive to you than reading his word. Let's set our journey through Proverbs aside just a second. Let's set that aside. Just in reading God's word, Satan will give you shinier things that look better, feel better, I'll give you an example. Do I think that all the books other than the Word of God written today are evil? No. There's some really good books out there that you can read. There's some good things to help you to grow. But if those books and those studies and those shiny things keep you from being in God's Word, it's a distraction and Satan is winning. If those things point you to God's Word, and get you into God's word more deeply, that's different. I'll give you some good books that, that, that Diane and I have read. In the Pit with a Lion on a Snowy Day by Mark Batterson. Great book, but that book drives you to the word of God. That book drives you to change your life and drives you into his word to discover the path that you're on and get you back on a path with God. Uh, Radical by David Platt. You get into that, game changer, no doubt, but full of and drives you into the Word of God. Uh, Crazy Love was one of the first books we went through as a church. 
And what it does, it just gets inside of you and you start reading this by Francis Chan. And, you, and when you read this, you look at this and go, not only does he love me, I want to love him and I'll drive you into the word of God. And it, and it describes for you how deeply passionate God is, Jesus is, and the Holy Spirit is for you personally. But those are not the word of God. If you go around quote, quoting more, I, I like all three of those books, but if you quote Mark Batterson and you quote Francis Chan and you quote other authors more than you quote the word of God, or you're in those books more than you know the word of God, those are distractions. Put them down, set them away. Or if it's the latest, you know, whatever book series is popular now, I don't have any idea. Or anything that you pick up. I'm going to be, I'm going to be, um, a little tougher on the students right now for a moment, but and from some students that I know in the room and some things that they're involved in, if band is keeping you from the word of God, it's a shiny thing that distracts you and shouldn't be in your life. If it's football, if football distracts you and keeps you from the word of God, you need to quit the team. Parents shudder at that when I say things like that. But I know deep down that parents support me in the fact that that if it's keeping you from the Word of God. Now, if you're using it as an excuse, that's a different story. But you've got to make the Word of God a number one priority in your life. And what Satan will do is work covertly and tell you, you do not need this wisdom. We live in a world being influenced by false teachers and conspiracy theorists, no doubt. There is no conspiracy to wisdom. It cries out to us, it is obvious, if you've seen the movie The Wizard of Oz, there is no wizard behind the curtain when it comes to wisdom. It's not overcomplicated. Wisdom is obvious. And to folks, to be honest with you, there's nothing to figure out. And in the book of Proverbs, you'll find there's not a lot to figure out. There's hundreds, if not thousands, of commentaries on the book of Proverbs. I'm not saying that those won't bring out a, a deeper flavor and richness to the book of Proverbs. But you're going to read through Proverbs and go, um, yeah, I, I'm convicted enough. I don't need a whole lot more. This is, this is pretty good on its own. And you, be, and you become more wise. So lesson number one from today is Satan works covertly, but wisdom shouts and shines. There's a second lesson from Proverbs 122. How long, O simple ones, and let me define simple for you. Simple is really, and we'll get to this in, in lesson number three, is, is there's an ignorance among us, okay? Um, I have more ignorance in crocheting, as we learned earlier, than Caleb Emerson does, okay? Caleb knows how to crochet. I, I, don't, I don't have a clue. I'm ignorant in that. I also have no desire, but nonetheless, it doesn't mean that it's not good, just not one of my things to do, all right? Um, we're ignorant on things and we don't know about things, so I'll ask the students this. Hopefully they won't let me down. If you're ignorant on something and you need to learn about something, what's one of the resources you go to that, that will show you how to do it? YouTube. YouTube, man. Everything's on YouTube. I think you could do a heart transplant on YouTube now. I think you can learn how to do that. I think all that's in there, okay? I don't recommend that, but anyways, there's you can, you can, you can watch YouTube. and It's, it's really... Um, I can't remember what I was doing the other... Oh, I know what it was. I was assembling this... Uh, um, whatever you call it, awning, perla, whatever you got it out back. And I, and, I, and I didn't know how to do something. So you just, somebody out there has recorded on YouTube and shows you how to, and, 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 and you can do that. So, but we're ignorant on some things. It doesn't mean that we need to know about those things, but we do need to know about the wisdom of God. And oh, simple ones means that we don't know. But it goes on to say, how long, oh, simple ones, will you love being simple? You know the saying, ignorance is bliss? Mm -hmm. it's, really not. It's, it's not at all. Not when it comes to the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Now, we can live in Diane world. Okay? And actually, Diane's world has gotten a little smaller these days, especially the last 10 years, on not being naive about you know how the world operates and things. She's been exposed to some things as I have been. And, and, it, and it, it's pretty ugly um, out there. We shouldn't, how long will we love being ignorant about the things of God? But it goes on to say, how long will scoffers delight in their scoffing and fools hate knowledge? So lesson number two is this, is that there's three types of sinners, okay? 
Now, it doesn't mean that there's only three types. I'm going to give you the three types that Proverbs chapter 1, verse 22 talk about. Number one is the ignorant, okay? It is, by Pastor Doug's definition, a sin to remain ignorant about the things of God, okay? To remain simple. It's just sinful. God has given us this 66 books by 40 different authors we need to get in here and we need to learn the word of God. What we want, what we want are big miracles. What we want are burning bushes. What we want are animals to talk to us and tell us the things of God. And God's going like, I've done all that. It's in here. Read this. Why would I give Austin another burning bush when there's one in here that's already said the things that I need to say? We don't need new commandments, Josh, because there's 10 that I've given you that you're not following now. Not you personally. I know you obey them all. But anyways, that's not what I mean. It is that it's there. It's in the Word of God. And how long will we remain simple and ignorant of the things that are right here in the Word of God? The second type of sinner are the mockers. Okay. These mockers are the ones who are as... And again, I give you resources that I use because I hope you'll go to them to make it easier on me. BibleGateway.com. Okay, again, hundreds of resources. The questions asked in verse 22 reveal these three classes of needed wisdom and the sin and the sinners involved in them and the downward progression of sin. There's ignorance and then there becomes mockers. These sinners commit more serious determined acts. These are things that we do. These are sins of commission. We've learned, we know better, and we do different otherwise. What you're doing is that uh, saved or lost. And we're, I'm going to talk specifically to those that, of us that know the Lord this morning, and that is when you know the Lord and you've learned something and you decide to do whatever you want otherwise, you're really mocking God. You're mocking the Scripture. You're mocking His Word. And, and it's like, ah, that doesn't really matter anyways. If you are involved in sin and you knowing that, it's, it's, well, the answer to that would be just not to learn it. No, there's, there's things we know to be sin that are, we're born with innately that we know this, is, this isn't good, this is wrong. Okay, now you can try to convince yourself that it's not, but it is. But as we learn more things, you're going to become, become convicted of more things. As you become convicted, we need to learn and we need to turn away. We'll get to that in a moment. But these mockers, these are, these are folks who many of us, all of us, we've done this at times. We know what the Word of God says and we do our own thing anyways. We really mock God. We mock the Word of God. We scoff at it and just go like, ah, that doesn't really apply to me. Or God gets it. He understands. Oh, He gets it. He understands that the wages of sin is death. We need to understand where we're at. But then there's a third. And these are described as fools or obstinate unbelievers who will not listen to the truth. These obstinate unbelievers who won't listen to the truth, we have to understand something as a church. My job, and I'm just, for those of you online, I'm just naming people in the room. I like using folks that are here. My job is to not manipulate Elmer in a direction that I think he needs to go. My job as a church and as a pastor and you as believers is to tell the truth about the Word of God and people are going to have to make decisions for themselves. I, I, can't, I can't make you do it. I, 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 I've, until this week, I never or just don't remember the level of stubbornness in a child until my granddaughter, Ruby. Ruby, I didn't spank her. I didn't, I didn't touch her physically in discipline, by the way. I don't mean that. But I believe Ruby would take a beating than to do what you want her to do. It doesn't matter what it is. You could, you could hand her a chocolate bar, and if it's not her idea, she doesn't want it. You, can get, you, you, you just... It has to be her decision. It has to be her way. And I look at her. And, by the way, she's a sweetheart. She can be so sweet. But she, she can be so sweet and so cuddly. 
But if it is not her idea, she is the pure definition of this, not an unbeliever, but this obstinance of, I am doing what I want. She will scream, she will cry, and she's not going to do it. There's nothing that you can do that can make her do it. And I do believe that she would take a spanking um, and, and still just wouldn't listen to you. That is an unbeliever who hears the word of God and says, it doesn't matter to me. I'm not doing it. I'm not listening to the gospel. And here's what this illuminated for me as a pastor and as a church. We're going to go to the park next week. We're going to share the word of God. We're going to share the good news of Jesus Christ. And guess what? I can't make anyone become saved. There was a, there's this thing coming up in September. I won't, I'll try not to be too hard on it. But it was, you know, it's encouraging baptisms. And I love it. We'll have a baptism service anytime anybody wants to have it. We will have it there. We'll have it in the park. We'll have it here at the house. We'll do it wherever you want to. But when I start manipulating people that they need to be baptized, I'm not saying preaching it and talk about it and convince them. But when I come to the point where I'm saying, let's try to have some spontaneous baptism services. And, you know, let's really try to concentrate on this. And I'm going like, now, wait a minute. I'm here to preach the word of God. The Holy Spirit stirs the heart. And people need to make their decisions. Those are true and genuine salvation experiences. And I'm going to do that. We'll have times of invitation and, and these different things. And trust me, I've gotten to preach. And, I, and I've let the, the choirs and some churches that I preach sing 20 stanzas of the invitation because I feel led that someone has a decision they need to make. I've done that. And that's okay because you feel led to do that. But I have found that what we need to be concentrating on as a church and as Christians are educating the simple. And those who decide to mock, we need to educate them that they're mocking. Those that are obstinate, we need to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. But there's a time when there's there's somebody that Diane, there's someone that Diane and I are dealing with right now, and she has become so obstinate that it's like I can't make you do anything. So we have these levels of sin. And what I'm telling you is that there's another lesson that comes along with it. Proverbs aims its wisdom at primarily the first group of people. And that's the naive and the ignorant. So as you read this, Proverbs is here to um, for you to take advantage of the wisdom that it dishes out. Proverbs isn't going to be here. You may get convicted to it, but it's really here to educate you on wis what wisdom is and give some valuable lessons. Lesson number three, and um, I'll move pretty quickly here. I'm coming up on 1130. Lesson number three is from Proverbs 123. If you turn at my reproof, behold, I will pour out my spirit on you. I will make my words known to you. And lesson number three is that wisdom requires repentance. Without repentance, there is no real wisdom. You can get a little knowledge but not the knowledge that you need and the wisdom and how to apply that without some repentance. And repentance is not confession. Repentance can include confession, but repentance is not confession. Repentance is turning away and facilitating a change. I, I read earlier in the week this. Repentance is a summons to a personal, absolute, and ultimate unconditional surrender to God as sovereign. You're sovereign God, I repent and I turn to you, and your way is the only way. It went on to say, though it includes sorrow and regret, it's more than that. In repenting, one makes a complete change of direction, a 180 degree turn towards God. And that can be in that specific sin that God convicts you about. So here's what you need to be prepared for. As you read Proverbs, be ready for this you're going to become convicted of things in your life. Either that you do or you don't do or you should be doing. You're going to get convicted. And that's okay. Let's do this as a church. Let's change together. Let's learn together. And let's repent together. And listen to the wisdom of God. Let's have a word of prayer as we go into our facilitator questions today. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. Thank you so much for the groups that have gathered today and the folks watching online. God, take us into this next few minutes as we walk through a few questions together. And God, what we could do 
Let's continue to learn from you and how to apply this in our lives. In your name I pray, amen. Uh, before the, the other groups may have already tuned out, but as they do, these facilitator questions are 